Good afternoon. I'm uh, very happy to welcome, uh, to spend some time with us today, uh, principal singers from the current production of Tristan at the Met, and I'll uh, introduce them ladies first. First of all, we have Nina Stemme. <laughs> Yekaterina Gubanova. Rene Papa. And Stuart Skelton. Um, we'll have kind of a free-flowing discussion. I have very little prepared. I have one or two questions to kind of seed the discussion, but we'll just kind of take it where it goes, okay? So um, I'll ask just a general question for all, all of you. Um, how has your experience been of singing in Tristan here and in this production? What's it been like? Ms. Uh, Nina, maybe you could start. Okay, I start. Uh, it's been a very pleasant experience, hard work in the rehearsal room. Mm -hmm. A big difference from the rehearsal stage to getting on to the real set, because mm -hmm. it's a huge set. And uh, above all, the musical experience has been fantastic with Simon Rattle, mm -hmm. I must say. Okay, all right. Um, Rene, we've had... Mm -hmm. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I'm, ha I'm happy to see you again, in light. Uh, um, yeah, very short. My experience was is completely different because I just had two days of rehearsals, and uh, which is okay because the part is very short in comparison <laughs> to Nina's and Skelton's and. Katya's part, um, but it was a fantastic, uh, or it is a fantastic production, completely different to what we have done before. Uh, a bit dark, I have to say, but anyway, the music is fantastic, the music is the same like it was before, and uh, to work with, with Simon Rattle, and of course with all these great and fantastic colleagues, it's always a thrill. It's very, very great for us to be here. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, Stuart? Um, yeah, I, what, what they said. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's been a wonderful experience, uh, particularly for me. Uh, I'm relatively a, new, a newcomer to the role. Uh, not, to, not to the production. No, I'm not a newcomer to the production, to be fair. But to be able to share the stage with Nina and Renee, who have so much experience, not only in Tristan and Isolde, of course, but in Wagner in general, uh, has been a, a, a marvelous experience for me to have my first sort of my, my first Tristan year with such esteemed and lovely colleagues. Musically, obviously, with uh, Sir Simon in the Pit and the Met Orchestra, they really are a remarkable group of musicians. Um, so it's been a really wonderful and positive experience for me, um, having done the production in Baden-Baden and now with small changes that we made for the New York production. It's uh, been a terrific, it's been, it's been fun thus far. Okay. Yeah, what, what they said. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, yes, I, I can only say that it has been a fantastic pleasure, first of all, because uh, um, I'm quite free with the role. I have done it many times, so it was just about enjoying every process, the process of rehearsal, the process of performing. It's just really, really wonderful. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. It is. What? What? Uh, again, a question for each one of you. What other Wagner roles uh, do you have in your regular repertoire? You start. <laughs> <laughs> He's got everything. But I'm like, <laughs> okay. All of them. Yeah. All of them. Okay. I start with the big ones. Um, Night Watchman in uh, <laughs> Meister Singer. Fasold, uh, one of the giants in Rheingold, mm -hmm. Hunding, the lovely husband of Sieglinde <laughs> in Valkyrie. Those are the big ones. So uh, I sang a few Wotans. I sang, uh, of course, as you know, uh, Gurnemans a lot. 
a little bit of Pognar. Uh, yeah, that's quite it. That's, that's it. I, I never sang sax, and please don't ask me why not, and why, when you will sing sax, I will not answer within yes <laughs> and when. <laughs> well, yeah. are you sort of Finished. done? Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Long list. <laughs> Uh, yeah, my list is quite long as well. Uh, my first Wagner role was as Freya in Rheingold mm. with, yes, René as Fasolt. 19, uh, 1994. Yes. Uh, and I sang that three summers in, uh, in Bayreuth and also in Hamburg a bit later. And then I moved on to the more lyric, uh, bigger repertoire like Elsa, Elisabeth Tannhäuser and... Uh, I did Eva in Meistersinger only in concert, and it's going to remain that way. <laughs> and uh, although I love the, the, the piece. Uh, and then I went on to Senta against some advice, but I thought I could do it in my way. And I sang it here at the Met 16 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and sort of the Senta led me on to Isolde. And I thought, okay, let's stop there, because Isolde can still sing as a lyric dramatic soprano. Uh, but somehow my voice, and Sieglinde, of course. Uh, before he's old, I sat, sang my first Sieglinde in Cologne in Germany. And it became a big part of my repertoire, along with Isolde. But I tried to keep the numbers of Isolde's down for quite some time, only one production per year. But after a while, after like, um, <laughs> Like five years singing of Sieglinde and Isolde, I felt, hmm, okay, maybe I dare to try on Brynhilde. And now that has been, become my core repertoire, the three Brynhildes in the ring, along with Isolde. Mm -hmm. And next year, or this season, I will sing my first country in Parsifal. Ah. Um, like Renee, I'm going to start with the big ones. Um, I was a Lehrbuben in Meistersinger. Um, uh, and then, in order, Eric, Rienzi, Lohengrin, Sigmund, Parsifal, Tristan, and I did actually sing Act 3 of Siegfried once. Um, my agent called me and said, what would be the issues of singing Act 3 of Siegfried? And I said, Acts 1 and 2. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, that, that, that's it. I think I have probably done all of the Wagner roles I'm ever going to do. Oh, did I say longer? Mm. No Siegfried? Uh, no, sir. No. <laughs> no, just not, I'm just not the right sound. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, <laughs> what can I say after all that? <laughs> but... <laughs> Uh, well, my first small Wagner was, uh, I mean, for, for this occasion, quite funny because I did uh, Flosshilde with uh, Simon Rattle a long, long time ago. And um, I guess then I did Brangena. Uh, then I did Freakas in the Ring, which I enjoyed doing very much. And um, soon I'm adding um, Venus in Tannhäuser mm. and uh, also Kundri. Mm. Ah, okay. I forgot, I, have I forgot King Henry and <laughs> Landgraf. Landgraf, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. Um, I have a question for you, Nina. I was, I think it, uh, I was reading on the web uh, about your experience, and um, I read that you had the opportunity of meeting Birgit Nielsen yes. and of doing some work uh, on the role of Isolde with Birgit Nielsen. So, or at least discussing it with her. This is what I read. Could you just tell us a little bit about your experience with her? her yeah, it's not completely true that I, I, I mean, I, that I even had the chance to touch the theme of Isolde, except that I said once we met, she was getting old, mm -hmm. and I was far too shy and thought I had too much to learn for myself before I could present anything to her. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, which I, of course, now regret, mm -hmm. Uh, we never got to work on it, and she said, yeah, please come down to my house in south of Sweden any time, mm -hmm. and we'll work on it, bring a pianist. Mm -hmm. And I never felt ready, mm -hmm. uh, apart from the fact that we had 
three small children at home. Mm -hmm. So I, I had to make my priorities. Right. Right. So okay. actually, she never heard my Isolde, but she knew about it uh -huh. as soon as I got the, 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 the request and the offer to do it at Glyndebourne Festival. Somehow, she was very well informed. Mm -hmm. So she almost knew it before I did. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me how, but that's the way mm -hmm. she worked. Mm -hmm. And how she was, yeah. Okay, you okay. it. And uh, I have a question for you. I was, I was reading through your um, repertoire yes, list sir. this morning, yep. okay? And I noticed that, that you've sung the role of Dimitri in Dvorak's opera Dimitri. I have, yes. Yes, and it's interesting me because there's gonna be a production of that here next summer mm -hmm. up at Bard College, they're doing Dvorak Dimitri. Right. So uh, since it's an opera I'm sure that most of us do not know, um, I'm just curious, what, what did you think of the part? What did you think of the opera? It's very long. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I learned it for a one-off proms concert uh, at short notice for the late dear Richard Hickox. Um, he had, uh, with the Welsh, the BBC Wales Symphony, were doing it in concert at the proms. And for whatever reason, the gentleman who was singing Dimitri um, was unable, he, he fell ill and was unable to uh, sing it. And they said, we need, can you learn this in Czech for a one-off? So I did, and I haven't sung it since. Uh. Um, <laughs> it is, it really does, it, it's kind of... I mean, obviously, the story is is the the continuation of Boris oh, Godunov, cool. Dmitri the Pretender, right. um, but it, it it is in lots of ways very similar vocally to um, Forza del Destino. There's right. lots of ensemble work, and then there's an aria, and then there's a duet, and then an ensemble, and and like some of the um, some, and also like Lohengrin, he gets his own. Uh, line in the big ensemble that isn't doubled by the chorus tenors, which means you can't cheat it, which is frustrating because um, it's it's a it's it's a good five hours with everything included. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of fun to do, but I have no memory of it at all uh, okay. because I put if I put it the quicker something goes in, the quicker it leaves at the other end. Uh -huh. So, um, but I remember it, I, I remember it being at the end of the night, thinking I'm really really pleased that's over. Ah, uh, okay, right, it is. Um, what what interesting uh, projects do you have coming up? Uh, new roles you're going to take on? Like that. <laughs> well, the, mm. for me, it's quite exciting to add uh, Carmen to my repertoire because I have not, never done. And uh, mm. that's coming up next in Chicago. So that's oh. what I'm working on now. Okay, okay. And um, we're gonna have a question that comes out of my memory that, that a couple of years ago, uh, I was moderator moderator of a panel with you also. And my memory is that you brought up that you might be interested in, in doing the role of the demon, uh, of Rubenstein. Rubenstein. Yeah, right. So I'm curious if you have done that and what do you think of the part? What do you think of the opera? A uh, demon, not on stage. It's what? <laughs> 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 no, I haven't done the, the, the part. Okay. It's, it's uh, it's very rare, they, uh, they don't um, uh, play it so often, but if I get a chance, I would love to do it. Mm -hmm. It's a fantastic opera. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to cast because you need two great tenors, you need two great sopranos, and uh, so it, it might be very expensive, and not all the opera houses, they have the money for that. Mm -hmm. So, okay. and uh, but it's not not easy. Uh, but the piece is fantastic. It's beautiful, and uh, the the part of the demon I haven't uh, studied it yet. By just the arias, it's 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 very beautiful, yeah, very, very nice beautiful work. Yeah. Yeah. Katya knows it better because <laughs> once she gave me a, uh, have a you, score. Have you sung the demon? No, <laughs> nothing. Right, right. No, I haven't done it yet. Okay, okay. So it's a general question, and I'm not going to ask you to name names. It's not a name naming question, but kind of a general thing. If, if you are in a production performance and you disagree with the conductor, let's say the conductor is doing things, tempos, whatever, that you don't like, not comfortable with, and I'm not asking you to say who, who you've had trouble with, um, but what, how do you negotiate that when you feel that there are differences between what you would like to do and what the conductor is doing, how do you negotiate that with him or usually or her? When it happens during a performance. You yeah, know. performance yeah. or, yeah. It's not too in, late to negotiate. It is too late to negotiate, but you can send, if they're open enough, 
There yeah. are signals you can send, like if you want a faster tempo, you just go slightly ahead. Okay. And right. either they pick up or they put the brakes on because they really want it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And you have to take extra breaths uh, or look them very strongly into the eyes and uh -huh. yeah, hope nobody else notices. <clears throat> if it's yeah, if it's too fast, then you pull the yeah, you pull the brakes. All right. All right. And yeah, mm. uh, if you're power, powerful enough and the conductor is sensitive enough, the tempo slows down and you mm -hmm. you meet again. Mm -hmm. But uh, I th yeah, I feel it's very, it's mm. rarely that it it happens, and they are ah. always small disagreements in tempo or small. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Misunderstanding, so mm -hmm. it's a give and take all the time. Oh, That's yeah. why live performances are so exciting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else like to comment on that question? Let me just say, I've never ever had a disagreement with a conductor ever. <laughs> <laughs> Marvelous! It's absolutely, absolutely wonderful. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the, the whole. However, <laughs> if I was to have had a disagreement with a conductor, I got a, a wonderful uh, a trick from a, a conductor who was uh, uh, an assistant of Savalish's. Uh, and I was, I was doing my first long run with this particular conductor, Kazushi Ono, a fabulous guy. And he said, the trick is, if you're singing something and you want it to be the tempo you're singing in and they're not following you, Make sure that you look at them, they clock that you're, they're looking at you, and then close your eyes. Because if you do that, they know that you can't see them, so they have to follow you. And this was a conductor that told me. So I, I figured if it, was, if it was good enough for one of the great assistants to the great Savalish, I figured if I ever got to that point, that's what I'd do, is wait till they look at me and just go. And keep singing. So oh, you haven't tried it I've yet. I've never tried it. I've no. never been that. I've never been that brave or stupid. <laughs> so how, how about you enter the stage and you never open your eyes? <laughs> Free. Exactly. <laughs> what um, What has been experience been like working with uh, Simon Rattle uh, on this opera? Anybody? Yeah. It's just wonderful. Yeah. I mean, it just happens. We yeah. make music. We don't talk a lot. And, mm -hmm. uh, yes, and yeah. we, we didn't no. talk it's, at it's, all. Uh, really? It goes beyond words, yeah. actually. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Because it's all about the music mm -hmm. and the music drama. Yeah. Yeah. One of the, Simon comes into the dressing room each performance yeah. before the show, yeah. just very quickly to say hi. Yeah. And he has this phrase, at least the one he uses for me, is like, let's just play tennis. <laughs> whatever, you, whatever you hit across the net to him, he will take and, and, and return uh -huh. it. And it, whatever he returns, you then take up and give it back. And it spends, it's five hours of us, all, all of us, moving with both, you know, sort of going with the flow of that whole thing. I had a, a, a colleague in the performance, not last night, on the, the previous Monday, uh, who said the highest compliment he could pay it was that he spent the entire five hours never aware that the orchestra was there. Wow. Which you think about the building, the pit that this was written for, that's Wagner, what he didn't want the orchestra to be obvious that it was there. Mm. And the fact that's, that Sir Simon can do that with the Met Orchestra in a pit that is completely not like the pit in Bayreuth. Mm -hmm. And he said, you were never aware of the orchestra being there until they needed to be. And then there they were. And then when you were singing, mm -hmm. we weren't aware that they were there, which I think is a, an incredible compliment. So the give and take and the cooperation with right. him is just magnificent. Is, 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 is absolute. Right. Is this, uh, first of all, is this the first time you've worked with him as a conductor? For me it is, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. You also? Yeah. 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 No, I've, no I've, that you've had. I've worked with um, Sir Simon at the Berlin Philharmonic uh, mm -hmm. a few times, and of course, this production when it was in Baden-Baden at the beginning of the year was also right. Sir Simon with his Philharmonica as uh -huh. opposed to the Met Orchestra. But um, I've had been very, very fortunate to have worked with Simon in Berlin quite a few times. Okay, and you, is this your first with Sir Simon? No, we did uh, the Serenade oh, back right. in two thousand six. Right. Yes. right, right, okay, all right. Do you, um, this is a question I'd like each one of you uh, to answer. Um, do you have a dream role that you would like to sing, but maybe you'll never sing? <laughs> ah, okay. 
<laughs> the most emphatic one right here. Okay, let's have it. Guess. <laughs> Isolde, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Guess. Never, Tristan. <laughs> Wise choice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, to be honest, there, I have two dream roles I know I'll never sing either of them. I want to sing Bluebeard and Gornemans. Ah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Thank you, I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> now, I would love to sing Scarpia, but uh, this is a little bit too high for me. So, but, you know, some dreams can come through, some not, and uh, mm -hmm. I leave it to my great colleagues. So, mm -hmm. But this, this would be a role I really love to sing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And... Um, um, oh, what was the... Some Enchanted Evening, the musical. Oh, yes, of course. Um, <laughs> the, this I would like to sing yeah. on stage yeah. once. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I, I couldn't hear. Yeah. I couldn't South hear. Pacific, right. right. South Pacific, yeah. We, South, I, South <clears throat> Pacific. Okay, many years South ago, Pacific. I got an offer ah. uh, when they played it on uh, Broadway in the Lincoln Center mm -hmm. and uh, asking me to, to do the, the revival. And I, I said, yeah, I would love to do it. And they said, yeah, but you have to be there uh, half a year mm -hmm. for six performances a week. I said, I cannot cancel all my other contracts. So, so mm -hmm. therefore, it never happened. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I really would love to do that. Mm -hmm. and I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm singing my dream roles, and I hope I am yeah. able to do it. But uh, yeah, like Rene. <laughs> I will never be able to sing Scarpia or Votan, but those are the, my dream roles. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Talk about dream roles, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Dream on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. right. what, what's the experience like of singing in a language which, which you don't speak? Like, like, like I know you've sung some roles in Czech, for mm -hmm. example, and things like that. Um, how, how is that for each one of you, if you have to sing a part in a language that you don't speak? It's a lot of work, mm -hmm. but it's a, I, for me it's a wonderful feeling mm -hmm. once you come over, when, when you make the language yours, although, I mean, I, I always work with a word-for-word -word translation. Mm -hmm. If I don't have time to, to learn mm -hmm. the language like Czech or Unfortunate, I don't speak mm -hmm. Russian either, mm -hmm. but I love to sing in Russian. I've done that far too little. Uh -huh. Czech is more difficult, much more consonants, much less legato. Uh -huh. Russian and Italian are like the same. It has so many uh, yeah, vowels. It's so good for language, the voice. Right? Yeah. Uh, it is a lot of work. Yeah. I go to a language course, uh, co coach, or uh, yeah, a pianist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I, I just take my time and let the words and the music sink in. So it's like a layer cake. You build mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. layer for layer until mm. you've conquered mm. the language and the role and made it yours okay. and you feel free about it. Okay. Okay. Anybody else like to address that question? Yeah, I've done a, a, quite a bit of repertoire in, in Czech. Yes. Um, and because I've done so much of it, it's part of how it all works now. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But the initial, the, the, the process, particularly with Czech, as Nina said, there are so many words that are completely vowelless. Um, mm -hmm. That <laughs> makes it, it, it just makes it more difficult to get any sort of real cantabile in the whole thing. But um, it is a, it, it's a remarkable language um, when it's set by the Czech, I mean, Jan Arczak, of course, mm -hmm. you know, um, set it so close to the way that, that the Czech is spoken. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's always, it is, it's hard work, word for word translation, even if that doesn't make grammatical sense. Mm -hmm. And then once you've got a word for word translation, so you've got the meaning of every word, then I try and make a more poetic English version of it mm -hmm. for myself, so that when I'm singing the word for word translation, at least part of my brain is thinking the poetry of the English version of it as well, so I can see and try and sing through the beauty of, of what's required rather than just singing each word for what it means at the time. But it, it, it's, it's hard work, um, and yeah. I don't do as much of it now as I used to. I don't do as much Russian as I'd like. I do mm -hmm. tend to do a lot in German, which is a language I've, I already speak, so it's... Right, right. It's, what it's have you done in Russian? Um, 
Lienski in Evgeny Onegin, mm-hmm. and more recently I did Cheman in Pirvei Dama. Aha. Uh-huh. Uh, and how was that role? I so, loved it. I had an absolute ball mm-hmm. um, yeah. with it. Um, with, it was, I was very lucky to be singing it with um, Vladimir Ashkenazi when he was mm-hmm. the chief conductor of the Sydney Symphony. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and we did it in a couple of performances in concert and I absolutely loved singing it. I do tend to be typecast in characters that are a little slightly broken mm-hmm. um, <laughs> for whatever reason. Um, uh, it, it must be my lack of sense of humour, mostly. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I loved singing Hermann. It was so much fun to do and, mm. and such glorious music. I mean, That's a to be fair, the, all, it's all the chorus work is just gorgeous. so yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And I had, I had a really great time. Mm-hmm. It's a very long part. No? Yeah, well, it, you know, it, it, compared to Tristan, not really. Yeah, so. okay. <laughs> right. yeah it's, a, it's a wonderful work. Right. Yeah. Did anybody else want to address the question of singing in languages that I you don't know? I just have one word to say. Hungarian. <laughs> Which, what was the word? Hungarian. It's, ah. it's, very, it's very hard to it's learn hard. the pronunciation alone yeah. in the beginning. Mm-hmm. But that mm-hmm. when it gets, gets into the system, it's fine. But first, uh-huh. uh, mm-hmm. it's horrible. <laughs> what, did you sing uh, Judith? Uh, Bluebeard Castle. Blue's yeah, Castle, yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes. yeah. What do you think of that piece? Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. I yeah. absolutely love it, and I'm happy that uh, it has been successful, so I, I'll do another two productions, and it's, mm-hmm. I'm really happy about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, The Met did a, a, a terrific mm-hmm. production mm-hmm. of that last year. Yeah, yeah. very, very good. You know. um, what, what kind of things do each one of you have lined up, let's say, over the next year? What, what, what will you be singing, and what's coming up next after this? Me, yeah, yeah, everybody, yeah. Um, nothing new, I think. Uh, the usual repertoire. King Philip, King Mark, uh, Gunemans. I'm working on a new recital program. And uh, I'm start to work on uh, Ox Rosenkammerie. Oh. That's me. Oh, wow. But no sucks, just ox. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Wow. That is. is that something you've like, dreamed about doing for a while, ox? Have you dreamed about doing that part for a while? No, I have other dreams. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, I mean, uh, I love uh, Strauss, he's a fantastic composer, and it's a great music. I just, I always did Orest in Electra, so now it's time to go on and uh, study uh, other parts like Rosenkavalier. So, and uh, it's great music. And when you are, I, I have younger colleagues, they sing Ox, um, and they do it very fantastic, very great, but I wanted to wait a little bit, so why not? Okay. Well, anybody else? Up. Upcoming things? Apart from uh, Kundri, mm-hmm. role debut coming up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, yeah, I have the usual repertoire, Turandot, Brunhilde, Elektra, mm-hmm. coming up. Yeah. Oh, okay. No concerts yeah. at the moment. Stuart, I don't have anything new, although I am singing a, a slightly abridged concert performance of Tristan in Hobart with a remarkable Swedish soprano we may have heard of. What, what, what's her name? Uh, uh, Stem, Stemmer? Stem, that's the, <laughs> yes. Um, um, Hobart's pulled out all the stops in casting the soprano, I've got to say. Yeah. Um, but apart from that, yeah, um, Tristan's uh, t- through the end of this year. Uh, then uh, next year, uh, well, Lohengrin in Paris and uh-huh. Jenofer in, in München. Ah. Mm-hmm. Um, but n- nothing I haven't done before. Is there a lone green in Paris? Yeah. January? A January and February, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> oh, I, I forgot, actually, yes. I do one of my dream ro- roles next summer in Salzburg. Lady Macbeth from oh. Zanz. 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 The Shostakovich? Sorry, yes, Shost- of course, yes. Ah. Yeah. ah. I, I sang it like 15 years ago, so uh, I have to restudy it, I guess. Yeah. Are you looking forward to it? Very much. It's a wonderful it's piece. It's a wonderful piece. Absolutely. And it not... It's not, I mean, yeah, you can be a bit funny there. Yes. Which is kind of hard with Wagner and humor. <laughs> doesn't really. <laughs> Sorry. 
Yeah. Uh, so I guess you consider uh, murder to be entertaining because she's <laughs> a very murderous character in Lady Macbeth. Hmm. Yeah, for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah it's, they, they met, uh, was it last year that uh, they did uh, Lady Macbeth here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But this, this piece has, of course, many more layers and just uh, you know, uh, murders. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, the music is just yeah, fantastic. Right. Yeah, it's a fantastic yeah. piece. Absolutely right. Um, and what do you think of Yenufa as an opera? You like singing? Yeah. Uh, mm. That's a, I have, there's two sides to the coin. Ah. Uh, I need to state at the outset, I don't like Janáček. Huh. I've never liked Janáček, I just don't get it. And I'm the only person I know that thinks that's true. I'm missing the Janáček gene. Uh, it is basically like nails on a chalkboard to me. Mm -hmm. But I think it's amazing music theatre. It's incredible drama yeah. and it's a terrific opera. Yeah. As long as I don't have to hear it. Huh. Oh wow. <laughs> I'm happy to sing in it, absolutely, because he's Lutz is a wonderful role. It's a terrific part to play, mm -hmm. but I but but Janacek just leaves me utterly cold. Really? Huh. And I know that I know that's that's ca my character flaw, but I've had it for as long as I've been singing. Janacek is literally like nails on a chalkboard. Ah, okay. Come um, did uh, any of the other you, uh, other uh, of you guys sing a, a Janáček part? Anything in your repertoire by Janáček? No, no? you have anything? Unfortunately, no? I, I've sung Yenufa, and uh -huh. uh, yeah. yeah, and uh, yeah, at some point I hope to sing mm -hmm. uh, Kostelnička, of course, mm -hmm. in that one. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I had I came to a point in my career where I realized that it's probably either going to be Wagner or. Uh -huh. because you have to study the language, you have to know the whole yes. opera, you have to know what everybody else is singing because it is, like Stuart says, music theatre. Yes. So it's actually like a play on stage. Yes. Of course, I've been asked, I don't know how many times, to do Emilia Marti in uh -huh. the Macropolis case, uh, and I don't have time to... I cannot find the time in my planning to study to it. To really learn it. And so yeah. that will have to wait. wait. Okay, okay. Okay. All right. Um, did as you, all four of you have uh, very wonderful careers going right now, uh, and we appreciate. Did did your careers take unusual turns? Do you find yourself singing things you didn't think, like 15 years ago, you would be singing? Have things, or have you had a plan to of what you would like to do, or have there been some surprises? Uh, if I can answer, yes and no mm -hmm. to those. Uh, I was a pure lyric soprano, like, yeah, 21, 22 years ago. Uh -huh. With a, yeah, a little bit bigger voice, I sang Pamina, and I, people around me realized that this voice might be going further. But I, I promised myself always to be happy with the repertoire I was singing at the moment. Mm -hmm. I, had, I was fortunate to sing a lot of Puccini when I had my fest contract in Cologne. And that sort of brought me on the way to Wagner, because... I loved his music, and there was something in that repertoire that really drew my yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. musicality and, and my my uh, curiousness to it. Uh, so I took yeah it was step by step. But if anyone had asked me 20 years ago if I would sing Isolde, I would have laughed. I said no, of course mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. I'm not. Yeah, maybe if I'm lucky, I'll sing an, an, an Elsa, or maybe then in 10, 15 years a Sieglinde. So that's where I was. So I'm, mm. yes, I'm kind of surprised by the way my career has okay. taken its turn. Okay. But I have planned it in to, yeah, with my intuition in a way, mm -hmm. because I've realized that the only one that can be responsible for my development as a singer is myself. Right. And I had yeah. to fight a lot. I had to keep many roles. I mean, I, I got asked about Isolde as I was singing Madame Butterfly, because, yeah. People just think that it's the same thing, but it's not. Mm -hmm. So I had to turn it down uh -huh. Uh -huh. for many, many years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Have you, have you had surprises? You, are you now singing things you surprised at yourself? Uh, or? Every time I get to sing a tenor roll, it surprises me. Because yeah. <laughs> let's face it, I was perfectly happy to be a lyric baritone for the rest of my life. Uh -huh. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't to be mm -hmm. for all sorts of reasons. Um, yeah, I, the surprise is I'm singing Tristan, 
because you don't think when you when you start when you come out of graduate school, uh, oh, you know, I'll, I'll be seeing Tristan one day. That, that, that's not a thought process that crosses any sane person's mind. Mm -hmm. um, you just do what's there that's right for you vocally at the time, mm -hmm. same that Nina was saying. You don't plan for a particular role, you plan to sing the role that's next comes, of, of all the things that come in front of you, is this the one that's, that's vocally the best place to get me to right, the next place? Right, logically fits. And you know, are, are you working with a particular conductor you've always wanted to work with, or a particular soprano, or a particular bass, or a particular mezzo, or a particular stage director? Mm -hmm. If these, and so the plan is to, take, to always be taking a forward step. Mm -hmm. either vocally or dramatically. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, then suddenly somebody hits you with a brick wall that is Tristan, mm -hmm. uh, and you, you go with it, you roll with the punches as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. You've been very quiet, so I'm gonna give you <laughs> the opportunity well, to well, talk. Well, I've just been thinking that my dreams have, from the beginning were quite daring, but uh, I never thought I would sing Wagner. I was, when I studied, uh, in the beginning in Russia, I thought I'd be singing Russian repertoire and Verdi. Uh -huh. So, and for the moment, it's not as much Russian repertoire at all because uh, in the end, I'm a higher mezzo voice and in Russia, we don't have, uh, mostly mezzo roles are quite low. Okay. And, mm -hmm. uh, but indeed, I ended up singing a lot of Verdi, which I'm very happy with. And, uh, and of course, Wagner was a big surprise. Mm -hmm. and, and it's going well, so <laughs> I'm yeah. happy about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're from Moscow? From originally? Moscow, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, you have any active Russian roles in your repertoire now, or have you? No. 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 Okay. Nothing. I mean, I, I can do Marina Mnishik and Boris Godunov. I have done uh, sometimes, but you know, once you establish yourself in uh, in uh, Wagner or Verdi, yeah. you you get sort you of get, type cast right. into. The, and I don't mind. I don't mind because for me, as a, as a native Russian speaker, when I speak in Russian, the voice goes a little bit. Back backwards because uh -huh. I, I tend to pronounce correctly or everything and, mm -hmm. and it does, it's not so good for singing. Uh, no? <laughs> no, 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 no. Why why is why is it problematic for I, singing? I think Russian language is is very deep inside and for, mm -hmm. for singing you have to bring things out. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so. Oh, okay. Well, well, you know, I understand, uh, Nina, that during this run of Isolda here you will achieve your 100th performance of the role. Right. That's true. Right. right. <laughs> Where are you in your... I'm surprised that you don't know how many I have sang. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think of it, he's old as probably like none. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, 100 is not that many, having sung it for... 13 years, uh -huh. so that's what I said earlier. I, I kept it. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, I didn't want to get tired or to over sing, but now I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. But the uh, the right. last performance would be my hundredth. The last one of the yeah. series here. Wow. wow. And, and we were together when you did your first. Exactly. Yeah. So how many have you done? Have you done? I, I, you don't I count. stopped counting after yeah. 1,500. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, understandable. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm curious, it's a, a kind of a general question for each one of you. Which, which role have you sung the most? Is Isolde number one for no, you? It, it is Isolde, yes. Okay. And Rene, for you, what have you sung the most, you think? I think it's Sarastro. It's what? Sarastro. Ah, okay. Magic flute? Mm -hmm. Mozart? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Stuart? Um, Weirdly, the one I've done most is Eric in Flying Fliegen Hollander. I've done 96 of those. I want to sing four more and then retire him of what? permanently. Of Fliegen Hollander? Yeah, I've done 96 Eric's. It was the first Wagner I ever did in 1999. And over time, they just sort of stacked up. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. But I'd love to do four more and then never, ever, ever sing him again. Ah. <laughs> wow. That is. was my first opera I ever attended was uh, Fliegen Hollander. Wow. Uh, yeah, Cole Berm was the conductor. Oh my goodness. Yeah, 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 yeah. And for you, what, ha what has been the role for me, you've sung? there's definitely Brangena. Really? <laughs> and then there's a nice tie between Amneris and Eboli. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Do you like singing Amneris? Mm. Oh, I do. I love <laughs> Yes, yes. Mm. What, 
what does it bring out of you, you think, as a singer, as a person? I'm narrating. It brings many, many things. It brings, uh, first of all, it brings things that I never got to experience in real life. Mm -hmm. Like uh, getting really crazy and doing uh, all these irreversible, scary stuff, but... <laughs> irreversible damage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, but mm -hmm. the, it's there's a nice. I think with Amneris, there's a really real nice um, contrast between a, a lot of power and a big weakness. So yeah. that uh, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. makes her interesting. Right. Well. And Eboli, fun to also, say. Yes, yes, yes. also mm -hmm. fun. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm blessed that I can do these roles. It's one. I, I really I'm lucky that uh -huh. I have that in my rep. Right. Yeah. Well. But well, what, what else would you like to tell us? That is, yeah. So I, I, something I have to, to uh, I have a question to you, Fox. Maybe it's not a question, it's more a demand. Um, you are always going to the opera house and listening to great operas and um, I cannot reach all the audience uh, at the Met, uh, uh, from the Met, but I please, I ask you and I beg you, when an, oh, Performance is finished. Wait with your applause. <laughs> it's not necessary to be the first who shows everybody how smart he is, you know, like, <laughs> bravo! Mm -hmm. We know that. So please wait, let the music settle down, sit down. You know, for us it's really annoying uh, especially for Nina when she finished her uh, lovely last uh, uh, Liebestod. And then, and also for Simon, I know we talked about, he tries to, to raise up his hand to show the audience uh, he's not finished yet, but everybody starts clapping and this is really, really annoying. Mm -hmm. So please spread that out, tell all your friends, all your, all your beloved people, they want to go to the opera, they should wait with their applause. Please. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks. Um, I would really like to thank all four of you for coming and spending time with us today and, and sharing your thoughts. We, we really, uh, I think I can speak for the group here, we have really appreciated and loved your performances in Tristan, and we wish you the very best in the coming years with your career. Thank you very much. Thank you.